Hey everyone, today we are looking into the lives of Nerissa and Catherine Bowles Lyon, the first cousins of Queen Elizabeth II. These contemporaries of the late Queen were born with severe mental disabilities and they were soon cast aside by the extended royal family in a controversy which only came to light decades later. Join me as we explore their story. Before we begin to explore the tragic lives of Nerissa and Catherine Bowles Lyon and the controversy which surrounded them, we first need to establish who the Bowles Lyons were. The family name originated in the mid 18th century when John Bowles, 9th Earl of Strathmore and Kinghorn in the Scottish peerage, who was also the chief of the clan Lyon, was granted the new aristocratic name Bowles Lyon by an act of parliament. The family can ultimately trace its lineage back to the 14th century when John Lyon, Lord of Glamis, served as Chamberlain of Scotland, while the origins of the family date back as far as the 11th century. The head of the Bowles Lyon family in the early 20th century was Claude Bowles Lyon, the 14th Earl of Strathmore and Kinghorn. His second eldest son, John, who was born in 1886, was the father of Nerissa and Catherine. Thus, they were the grandchildren of the 14th Earl, one of the most senior nobles in the British peerage. Because of the prominence of the Bowles Lyon family, John was wed to Fenella Hepburn Stuart Forbes Trefasis, a younger daughter of the 21st Baron Clinton. John Bowles Lyon and Fenella's marriage soon resulted in numerous children. A daughter named Patricia was born in July 1916, though sadly she died just before her first birthday. Another daughter, Anne, appeared just months later. She was healthy and would go on to live a relatively long and happy life, as did Diana, who was born many years later in 1923. However, John and Fenella's other two daughters were troubled. These were Nerissa, who was born on the 18th of February 1919, and Catherine, the last of their five daughters, born on the 4th of July 1926. Sadly, both Nerissa and Catherine were born mentally handicapped. In the less than politically correct terminology of the time, they were classed as being, quote, imbeciles, and the exact nature of their affliction is not entirely clear even down to the present day. Such afflictions were not entirely uncommon amongst the European nobility by the early 20th century. Years of inbreeding and marriages between first and second cousins had led to severe illnesses, and mental issues becoming prevalent amongst many of the continent's royal lines. Whatever the extent of it might have been in Nerissa and Catherine Bowles Lyons' cases, we do know that they never learned to speak properly or communicate effectively. This all occurred at a time when there was very little medical understanding of what caused such afflictions, and a considerable social stigma continued to attach itself to mental disabilities. Thus, in 1941, Nerissa and Catherine, who were by that time 22 and 15 years of age respectively, were placed in the Royal Ellswood Hospital in Surrey by their family. This had opened in 1855 as an asylum for the mentally ill, but by the mid-20th century, it had turned into an institution designed for patients with severe mental handicaps. And then, the family largely tried to ignore the fact that the two girls had ever existed. In the years that followed, their mother Fenella did not visit the sisters, nor did other extended family members. Their father John was long dead, having died prematurely in 1930, at 44 years of age from pneumonia. Perhaps a major unexplained aspect of all of this was why the family had waited until 1941, when Nerissa was already in her early 20s, to place the sisters in institutional care. Nerissa and Catherine's plight, as hard for us to process in the early 20th century as it might be, would probably have never been a matter of significant public interest had it not been for the links which had developed by this time between the Bowles Line family and the British royal family. On the 26th of April 1923, when Nerissa was just four years old, and over three years before Catherine was even born, their father, John's younger sister, Elizabeth Bowles Lyon, had married Albert, the Duke of York, a younger son of King George V of Britain. Thus, from 1923 onwards, 
the Bowles lines were related by marriage to the British royal family. This link to the British monarchy became even stronger still in years to come. As the youngest son of King George V, it had not been expected that Albert would succeed to the British crown. When the king died in January 1936, he was succeeded by his son Edward, who became King Edward VIII. The new monarch's reign though, was decidedly brief, as his determination to marry Wallace Simpson, an American twice divorcee, was deemed unacceptable to the British political establishment. As a consequence, in less than 12 months, Edward had abdicated the crown, and was succeeded by the Duke of York as King George VI. This change of circumstances meant that Elizabeth Bowles Lyon, Nerissa and Catherine's aunt, became the Queen Consort of Britain. What's more, in April 1926, just weeks before Catherine Bowles Lyon was born, Elizabeth had given birth to a daughter, named Elizabeth after her mother. This was the future Queen Elizabeth II of Britain, who was Nerissa and Catherine's first cousin. All three young women having the same grandparents, Claude Bowles Lyon, 14th Earl of Strathmore and Kinghorn, and Cecilia Bowles Lyon, near Cavendish Bentinck. As the years passed, Nerissa and Catherine continued to live at Royal Earlswood Hospital, largely ignored by their extended family. Just over a decade after they entered the hospital in Surrey, their aunt's husband, King George VI, died prematurely from a widespread family health problem caused by chain smoking. He was succeeded by Nerissa and Catherine's first cousin, Queen Elizabeth II, who would go on to rule Britain for the next 70 years, becoming the second longest reigning sovereign in international history. Much of the controversy surrounding Nerissa and Catherine focuses on the 1963 edition of Burke's Peerage. Burke's Peerage is a genealogical study which is published annually, providing details of all the members of the British and Irish peerage, their ancestors, and the current members of these families, including extended members of the royal family, dukes, earls, baronets, barons, and other landed and titled families. It was first published in 1826 by an Irish genealogist, John Burke, at the time when Ireland was still fully ruled by Britain. By the 20th century, the peerage was being published annually, with members of the British and Irish nobility being sent forms to update the genealogical details of their families. In 1963, when the Bowles Lyon family received their form, Nerissa and Catherine's mother Fenella filled it in. Controversially, she listed Nerissa as having died in 1940, and Catherine as having passed away recently in 1961. This was despite the fact that, her two daughters were still alive, and residing at Earlswood Hospital. Could the family really have been misled into thinking that their two daughters had passed away, considering that they continued to pay £125 annually to Earlswood for their maintenance there? At the time, little was made of this, but in 1986, it was revealed that the girls had been listed as being dead in 1963, despite both of them being alive at this time. In an effort to explain this away, Fenella's nephew stated that his aunt, who had died in the interim period, had been a vague person, for whom it would have been quite typical of her to fill out a form such as that for Burke's peerage incorrectly. However, this is hardly a satisfactory explanation. Fenella had provided specific dates on which her two daughters were alleged to have died, and she was quite clearly trying to cover up the fact that the family had placed them at Earlswood, and then attempted to act as though they did not exist. Nerissa and Catherine lived at Earlswood for decades to come. Eventually, Nerissa died there in 1986, at 66 years of age, 45 years after first being placed in the hospital. Her funeral was not attended by any members of their extended family, albeit many of their direct family members were deceased by that time. Instead, hospital staff were the only mourners present. Catherine continued to live at Earlswood until the hospital was closed in 1997. In advance of the closure, Catherine, along with several other cousins who had been sent to Earlswood over the years, suffering from the same genetic illness, 
or move to Ketwin House. I care how nearby in Surrey. When it too closed its doors in 2001, Catherine was moved again. She only died in February 2014, nearing her 90th year, and after spending over 70 years in various care home settings. Neither she or Nerissa had ever learned to communicate with others, such was the extent of their disability. Nerissa and Catherine's story became a source of considerable controversy in 1986, following Nerissa's death. The story of the Queen's first cousins who had been hidden away from the world and effectively disowned by their own family was broken by the Sun newspaper in Britain. Further investigations revealed that their mother, Fenella, had provided false details of her having died many years earlier, and this compounded the controversy. Here was evidence that the Bowles lines had not only placed two of their children in a hospital and effectively ignored them thereafter, but had then pretended that the sisters had died many years earlier. To compound matters further, details of the death of Nerissa and the fact that her funeral had not been attended by any family members then emerged. Shockingly, her grave at Redstone Cemetery was revealed to have been unmarked, apart from a plastic tag and a serial number. This was later remedied when Nerissa's two nieces and nephew organised for a headstone to be erected over the grave. By the late 1980s, the details of what had occurred were largely available to the public, but the story has re-emerged into the spotlight on several occasions since. For instance, in 2011, Channel 4 broadcasted a documentary called The Queen's Hidden Cousins. This took an editorial line that the sisters had been ignored and mistreated by their family, while the wider Bowles line family lived lives of esteem and luxury. It was also believed to have immensely upset Queen Elizabeth II, who was directly involved in the title, but who would have been almost entirely unaware of what had happened to Nerissa and Catherine, and was certainly not involved in any way in the decision to place the sisters in Earlswood in 1941. More recently, the story of Nerissa and Catherine has featured in the popular Netflix drama The Crown, forming an integral part of episode 7 of season 4 entitled The Hereditary Principle. With the reappearance of their story, significant publications such as Harper's Bazaar and Esquire cover the story of the Bowles Lion sisters again. Ultimately though, while the controversy over the sisters certainly points towards some callous behaviour on the part of the Bowles Lion family, the story of Nerissa and Catherine is a reflection of how a supposedly enlightened society such as Britain treated those with severe intellectual disabilities as recently as the mid 20th century. Thank you everyone for watching this video on the Bowles Lion sisters, I hope you found it interesting. Let me know what you thought of their lives and story down below in the comments. And if you have any other suggestions, also leave them in the comments. I hope you guys are subscribed and have notifications turned on to get all my videos as soon as I upload them. And also if you're interested in any historical books and items or anything to do with my setup, there are links to my Amazon store in the description. Anyway, that's all from me, so I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.